Hello and welcome to part three of my box van build. In this video, I remove the roll-up door off the back as well as the U-Haul step bumper and build a whole rear wall with a window and a trunk. If you're new here, my name's Dave Coven. I bought this box van from U-Haul and I'm building it into my own personal, completely off-grid, off-road capable home on wheels. I'm not exactly sure where to begin on this. It's gonna be a big project. Um, first thing I need to do is remove this rear roll-up door here. And I'm gonna kinda tinker around with these springs up here try to figure out how to release the tension on them. I think I just need to put a bar in this hole, back off this bolt, and then slowly crank it, um, kind of like any garage door spring, torsion spring they call it. And then I have to remove these tracks. They're riveted on, so I'll be drilling them rivets out. I'm gonna just figure it out as I go. two bars that fit in the holes. I've got, these are punches. Oh, scary. Okay, there's two bolts actually. Now that I can see the other side. Loosen the bolts. Okay, so these are just cotter pins that go through. Um, they're super rusty. I got some WD, but let's see if we can just get them out of there. There we go. That one's out. So I was looking at this and trying to figure out how to take it apart. All of the rollers and hinges are riveted to the door. Um, that bolt is only there so you can adjust the top roller. The tracks are riveted to the box. And they came in through the top because there's really no good way to drill from underneath because the tracks in the way and the track is spot welded to this piece of metal here this frame so the best way to take this door off is to remove all of these bolts all the way around and then grind these rivets and knock them out and then the whole thing will come off as an assembly, which is gonna be really heavy and awkward. Um, I'm gonna try to not hurt myself or gouge up my vinyl floor, like when it's time to actually remove it, so. All right, the next thing I have to do Let's get these rivets out. They look like they're just aluminum and they're barely in there. So I think I'm going to attempt to chisel them out with the air hammer. Not bad. 
Okay, putting on gloves so I maybe don't hurt myself. I think this is all the way unbolted off everything. What I'm thinking is you can pull the rollers out. So if I can turn it and get one track off, I'll do this side. Oh, don't tell me it's bolted on the back too. That would be ridiculous. No, it shouldn't be. I'm missing something here. the other side real quick. Yeah, I see nothing holding the store on anywhere. Hmm. Today's heat index is 108. I've got the door open right now. So when I do get this out, I can just have room to maneuver it out of here. But I need to hurry because I'm letting all the AC out. I only opened it as high as I need to. several places. <clears throat> so how in the hell did they install this door? This is just frustrating. Everything's riveted. All right, so if you're doing this, here's what I recommend. Here's what I've learned. Um, you should remove the door, the panels of the door, by drilling out all of the rivets up one side and then knock out the rollers on that side. Then you can grab the door and pry it off of the other side. Then what you should do is <clears throat> drill out all of the spot welds that hold the track into its um, bracketry and then leave that bracket here because it sort of like completes this rear uh, panel here and it's just a good uh, support for the van. <clears throat> I'm happy with what I've done. I learned a lot. Um, I'm going to put new bolts through all these holes here, which will support the wall again. And then I'm going to get on to building my rear wall. Uh, I did gain a lot of space by removing all of this, at least in this corner, or both corners, which I'm pretty happy with. Um, I also gained access to all the wiring for the lights and the hitch and stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with this. Um, there's brackets up here that are welded on. I'm going to have to cut those off. I might do it with the Sawzall um, just because sparks and stuff on the vinyl floor. This is how I left my van last night. It stressed me out a little bit, but I park in a fenced-in gated lot and I put a club on the steering wheel. Remember those? The club? Um, I got my window. Check this out. 
This is a 36 by 22 RV exit window. And I could have gone much larger, which I wanted to, but I couldn't get that in this style. I bought this from Amazon. Um, I could have went down to the local RV place and ordered a window like I did with my door, but then I would have had to wait a month and a half and pay for shipping. So it opens like this. <clears throat> and the reason I wanted this style is so I can open it while it's raining. And the whole thing is a screen. So I'll have this right next to my bed. And at night I can open this and then have the max fan running and I should sleep pretty good. It also opens all the way. That's why they call it an exit window. I think the point of that is like if you get in a like a car wreck or the rigs burn into the ground or something, you can get out. But hopefully I'll never have to use that feature of it. The brand is uh, that. There was uh, the Rec Pro, um, which looked identical to this, at least on the description and in the pictures. That's kind of ghetto. Um, but it was like 45 bucks more expensive. So I think I paid 209 for this. So I'm going to start by cutting off these brackets from the roller. I'm just going to use a sawzall so I don't throw a ton of sparks on my vinyl floor. I got this tarp down here that I used for the wall last night um, for now just to catch the shavings. I quickly abandoned the sawzall idea and went for the grinder. Before I go any further, I need to figure out the height of my bed. Um, the bottom angle iron for the rear wall is also going to be the rear support for the plywood for the bed. I want at least 12 and a half inches from the bottom to the uh, bottom of the window. Um, I'm going to put a twin mattress here. Um, I could get an 8 inch or they make a super soft comfortable 12 inch one that I've been thinking about and then a half inch for the plywood. But um, the window is 22 in height and um, I want at least two feet underneath. I know for sure that I'm gonna be storing my generator under the bed as well as my chair, a rug, uh, probably a tote. Um, so I'm gonna measure this. It's about 19. Um, I think I'm going to shoot for at least two feet under the bed.
for the night. Well, I'm having some technical difficulties. My welder ran out of gas. And I've spent 20 minutes looking for my T-square. It's gone. But I'm going to cut the plywood and just clamp it in there for tonight. That way it's not just a tarp like last night. This is 5 8 sanded plywood. My brother had a good point. He said I should get marine grade plywood, um, but it's too late now. I already bought this. And I need two sheets to do what I'm doing, and it's, that stuff's like 100 bucks a sheet. I don't remember what I paid for this. I think it was like 40. and three quarter. You ever watch like this old house or any of those New England woodworking shows? It's 42 and three quarter. Alright, so I had some technical difficulties. I ran out of gas for my welder. I went and got more today. I let it sit out overnight and it rained. So when I went to weld on the top, there was moisture between the metal and it looks like shit. But um, it's done and it's secure and strong and whatever. It'll look good when I'm done caulking and painting it. Anyway, so this is the wall. There's going to be a window, and then underneath, because this is where the bed will be, there will be storage under the bed. So I have to make access to the storage to make like a door. Um, simple enough, right? Well, there's a whole other part of the equation. This is my bike, and I can't live without it. It's a big bike. It's like 29 inch wheels and I can't afford anything nicer or smaller. It actually fits me perfectly. It's, you know, I've had it for a few years. I traded a guy some car parts for it. But I wanna store the bike on the back of the van, but I don't want it outside because it'll rust. And I don't wanna keep it inside because it's huge. It'll take up a ton of room. So what I'm gonna do is build a storage box for the bike on the outside of the rear wall and then you open that up and that's how you access everything. So I got to build a little stub out from the wall, frame that out, and then make a door. <clears throat> so I'm going to kind of store it like this. And the furthest sticking out thing will be the pedal, most likely. Yeah. So I need to just kind of get a rough estimate of how far out I want to go. And then I'll measure the height of the bike. I want it to sit with that. I don't want it lower than the floor. So I'm not sure what I'm doing for a bumper yet. Going to be 36 inches tall which puts the bottom of the window pretty much where I originally planned it to be but I'm gonna to have to come out 12 inches from the floor 
So my side pieces down here will have to be uh, 14 and a half. <clears throat> and one thing I'm noticing, if I have a box here that extends 12 inches out, um, it might obstruct people's view of my tail lights. Um, so I was thinking about getting some cool, like long, skinny ones from a truck stop or something and mounting them up higher anyway. I think that'd be nicer aesthetically and safer. So I'll figure that out later. I made this kind of ghetto rough sketch of what it needs to look like when it's done. Okay, the grinder's broke. It's not the cord. I thought it was because, um, you know, it's been like that for years. I only have two more pieces of metal I have to cut. And I found this ancient Harbor Freight four inch grinder with no guard on it. I just put a four and a half inch disc on it and I can't fit my handle in the side because the screw hole's too big. This is really sketchy and extremely dangerous. So if I severely injure myself, you're about to see it. <clears throat> I will take apart my other grinder Try to figure out why it suddenly quit working. But I just want to cut these last two pieces tonight. I'm going for the full face shield for this one. Hopefully it doesn't get me in the eye when it explodes.
All right, it's the next day. I just got off work. Uh, I'm gonna get this wall done. I'm gonna try anyway. I have a piece of flat stock to go over the bottom of the back so the plywood has something to be supported by. I've got this tiny little piece of 16 gauge sheet metal uh, to cover those two holes in the floor where the old roll-up door latch used to be. I bought the cheapest angle grinder you could get. This was 15 bucks and I did not get the 12 month warranty for an extra three dollars because I like to live dangerously. Anyway, I got um, more hardware and everything I need pretty much to finish this up. Before I take the plywood off again, I'm going to uh, find the position of the window and mark it out. I've been thinking a lot about bumpers lately. Um, I'd really love to build my own custom bumpers front and rear for this thing. I want to have a proper two inch receiver hitch. I want good ground clearance. I want a winch on the front. I want fog lights, I want backup lights, um, I just don't have the like tools or ability to do that, that's a huge project. Um, I might try to find, I might put out an ad like to see if anybody has a pipe bender and a welder and a shop and would be willing to help me, you know, if I paid them to build some bumpers for this. Uh, but one thing's for sure, this is now just dead weight. I am going to remove this step bumper off of here. And just for shits, this thing here is freaking sturdy. I mean, but just for fun, I'm going to triangulate a piece of angle from here to here on both sides. Uh, I'm going to have to relocate my license plate, obviously. But I'm going to go ahead and um, just throw the GoPro on time lapse and just start working. I got to get this bumper off. I got to finish welding all this stuff. I have to paint all the metal and start cutting plywood to really box this thing in. So. You know, they could have used more bolts to put this bumper on, just saying. I think between the bumper and that roll-up door, I just shaved like 400 pounds off the back of this thing.
Alright, it's a few days later now, and I need to get this done. Um, it was never really in our agreement um, that my friend would not be able to park his company van in the shop, and I've had this sitting in here since uh, Wednesday night. It's Saturday now. Um, it's about 11.30, and I need to be out of here by 5 o'clock. Um, caring for my mom right now. She just had surgery. Get well soon, mom. Um, but I have had a few days to stew on this and I got a pretty good game plan. Um, first thing I'm going to do is cut all the plywood and get it primered. And while that's drying, I'm going to drill the holes in the metal to mount it with and get the metal painted. All right, I think I mentioned with the door that you don't really want a super tight fit because as things get hot, they expand and you don't want to create a lot of stress on your door or window. This does have some play both ways, so I think I'm good. I just realized that I screwed myself by cutting this plywood the way that I did because I need to make two pieces for the rear door and I want those to be 5 8 I would have much rather made these sides half inch ply. So I can either do the rear door in half inch ply or go buy a whole nother sheet of 5 8 I have one sheet of half inch but I was going to use that for the foundation for my bed. Could have just drove the van, but this seemed quicker. Okay, um, everything's cut poorly. Um, I'm going to focus now on getting all of the other sheets of plywood except for these two in primer. Um, my main goal for today is to get the 
fan sealed up so I can move it outside. And it's shortly after two o'clock, so I've got under three hours to get this done. Um, and then I'll work on the hinges and getting these doors where I can mount them and then I'll get them painted as well. running out of primer I'm gonna try to do two coats on the outside surfaces at least <clears throat> I've got these commercial heavy-duty door hinges um, from an old job I did years ago and what I'm gonna do is cut them just inside of the screw holes on one side and then weld them inside of the angle evenly spaced wherever I decide to put them. Two on each side and then the door will bolt to this. I'm going to notch out the doors to fit that and then I'm going to take the piece that I cut off and shim it behind here so the bolt will sit inside of the angle. Um, I don't know if these are stainless or if I'll even be able to weld them. Um, if it doesn't work out, I'll just come up with some other idea and, you know, get the doors done another day. Alright, well that's all drying. I'm going to drill holes up here and everywhere I need to to mount the plywood. I'm using quarter by inch and a quarter carriage bolts. Alright, wish me luck. I'm gonna turn up the voltage. Hopefully, really melt these in here. As long as they stick, that's all I need. And it has to be, you know, a good weld because I'll be bouncing up and down the road. Oh yeah, it's working great actually.
worked surprisingly well. I just primered them, but they are on there. And yeah, it welded just fine. I think maybe they were just regular steel and had that kind of bronze finish on them. But I am now going to tarp off the floor in the van and spray paint all of this black. And then it's time to start putting it all together final assembly. The doors I'm going to have to do a lot of work to, but we'll do that last. install plywood. I'm going to use the butyl tape. I bought another roll of it and everything's going to have that and the seam sealer.
Alright, so the plan for right here to secure these two pieces together, since I didn't put angle iron there, this is a 2x4 that I ripped down for another project, and I'm going to put it right there, just like that, and then seam seal. <clears throat> but I have to screw it from the other side. So, I think I'm going to clamp it somehow. Okay. That looks good. All right, it's time to install this window. The window does not have mounting holes on the outside. I believe it's made to just be smushed in the hole and then you use this trim ring on the inside to mount it with. I want to drill holes in it and use these same stainless screws that I installed the door with. So I'm getting ready to drill a bunch of holes in my $220 window that's brand new. Um, I'm taking the trim ring and I'm just going to kind of use that as a guide to where to put the holes because that'll save me a bunch of time spacing everything out, you know. I believe the frame is aluminum so it shouldn't be too difficult to do this. I'm also running dangerously low on butyl tape. I really hope I have enough to do this. I don't want to buy a whole nother roll. Wait two days. You know, just to get this window on. I'm so close to being done with this freaking project. Also, what the hell? It's like the actual window itself is off centered. That is weird. Oh yeah, this thing is like way off. What? I wonder if it's these screws I can like make adjustments to it with. It almost looks like it shifted in shi shipping, you know? Because that screw was kind of messed up. Oh yeah, the whole window just moved. Wow. Huh. Okay. Oop. Yeah, this thing is pretty shitty quality. Maybe I should have spent the extra few bucks on the Rec Pro brand.
breaking the skin of my teeth right here. Am I gonna make it? <laughs> Look at that. Can you see it? Literally the end of the roll. <clears throat> the van life gods are smiling down upon me right now. Alright, let's install this thing. All right, it's time to do these doors. So what I need to do is notch out the plywood to clear the hinge. And I need to shim it up too, so it actually. All right, I got this gasket scraper and this trim popper, and they're about the same thickness. As I've been waiting for the paint to dry, I trimmed all the butyl tape, cocked around everything until the tube ran out. Yeah, it's coming along. Um, it looks messy right now, but I just need to finish the um, fabrication and stuff, and then I can go back and paint everything. Um, still thinking about tail lights. I mean, once you're over here, if there was a car like right behind me and I hit the brakes, I mean, if they aren't looking up at that, we have problems. So, I'll figure something out. I kind of want to get rid of these like all together and then get something more attractive like a long skinny LED, like a strip or something, I don't know. 
I'm gonna shop around. Like I said, I might go to a truck stop and see what they got there. But, um, I'm gonna throw these doors on and then call it a night. It's, um... It is almost two in the morning, so. It's Sunday night. It's about 8.30. It's perfect camping weather. Tomorrow's Labor Day, so I don't have to work. I'm gonna get this finished. Wrap this project up. First thing I'm gonna do is finish these doors. Um, I'm not really happy with the way they're mounted. There's just the tiniest little difference between the two. I'm gonna try to tinker with the bolts over here to adjust that. There is a gap, about a 5 8 gap behind the door. And I also have weather strip. I bought two rolls of this stuff. Um, I wanted some other stuff, but it was pretty expensive. It was like 17 bucks a roll, and I needed two. Um, but it fills gaps up to 3 8 I'm going to just plan for about a quarter inch so it has a good squish to it. There's about 5 8 behind these doors if they sit flush with the way they're mounted on the hinges. So what I'm going to do is cut up some 3 8 plywood. I'm going to put a strip on the back of this door that extends out so they close nice and evenly. You know, similar to any double door. And then around the edges, I'm going to put a filler strip around all the edges as well. That way the doors sit flush and then have a good seal for the weather strip. I also have another piece of aluminum seam binder for right here. Um, I got some uh, self-drilling lath screws that I'm going to use to mount it with because there's metal under that, not wood. And I also have um, just a quart of semi-gloss, nice bright white exterior paint. Um, I'm going to touch up everything and paint it all for now. I don't really know what I'm doing with the like actual paint job for the van yet, but for now I'll just keep it white with black trim. So that's what I'm trying to accomplish tonight. Okay, <clears throat> to secure these doors, I've got two small gate latches, a uh, barrel bolt they're called. One's going to go here. I'm not using this half, just this part. And one's going to go here. That's what's going to hold the doors shut. And then to lock them, I've got a large heavy duty one that has a little hole for a padlock, and that's going to go here. I spent a lot of time at two different hardware stores looking at all of the hardware, trying to figure out a creative but not overly complicated way of doing this. So that's what I came up with. Also, I've got some creative paint work I'm going to do between the black and the white to make this whole rear end look really good here in a few hours when I'm done with it.
So what I did here is I welded washers to the top and bottom and then I thickened it up with the welder. It's not the prettiest thing but they're thick and they should last for a while. Um, you know, they'll get beat up over time but um, that's how the door secures shut now. The next thing I'm going to do is install this threshold. Okay, I'm going to install this seam binder, it's called. It's just a flooring transition strip. Um, it's six foot long, so it's not quite long enough to reach the walls, but it's long enough to cover this. And uh, I'm not going to trim it, I'm just going to let it overhang a little bit. These areas over here in the corners, I'll probably fill those with expanding foam eventually. I want to leave them exposed for now so I can um, keep tail light wiring. Also the van didn't come with the rear view mirror. And what I want to get is a front and rear camera. I'm going to wire one of those in at some point. I've got these um, self-drilling lath screws. I've had really good luck with these um, over the years. I love these things. I'm hoping they don't snap off though, because they got some pretty thick metal they're going to be drilling into. I also hope they're long enough. But anyway, I'm just going to eyeball it going on my grout line here. All right, the last thing I gotta do, there's a little, there's not a gap like going inside, but there is an area here that needs to be sealed and I need to seam seal around this top. I got this. This is roof flashing. It's just a bent piece of aluminum. It's a 90 degree with a little lip on it. And what I'm gonna do is put it like that. And then I'm going to secure it, maybe with some screws, but mostly seam seal. So I just need to trim it. So these are like those same wood lath screws, but they're short. These are three quarter. I got half inch too, I guess I could use. But I like the head on them. It's a nice wide pan head.
Well, I'll have to put a second coat of white on, but I kind of figured that because I bought semi-gloss. But it turned out pretty good. Put my generator in there. I gotta wait to put my bike in here because the paint's wet. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, so I have to put on this weather strip. I'm not really like totally stoked on this product that I bought. Um, and it might be too thick. It says 3 8 Seals gaps up to 3 8 um, Fits gap 3 16 to 3 8 So I'm thinking that my gap is more like an eighth inch. So this might be just too thick. I'm not sure. We're about to find out. If it doesn't work, I'll return it, at least the one that I didn't just open, and get something else. But it's just like a foam rubber, and it's made for windows. So my options here are to either get some better weather strip, assuming this doesn't work, I mean, and then try that or I can remove this 3 8 plywood from in here and try something else. Or it might just work flawlessly. I'm expecting at the very least I'll have to maybe file out these holes that I made for the latches to go into because it might be such a tight fit when it's all done that I can't get the doors to close very well. Um, there was this other product I was looking at, which is also just a foamy rubber stuff, um, but it was like way thicker. And I was kind of planning on that before putting this plywood in here to shim it out. But I kind of just built this whole contraption like as I went, kind of like by the seat of my pants or whatever people say. So, I don't know. It's coming together, I guess. Will it shut? Oh yeah. Yeah, so it's already like really pushing on this latch. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I really don't want to compromise these latches any more than I have to because also these are just screwed in. So, I mean, if there's a ton of pressure on them and I'm going down the road, bumping around, they might strip out of the wood. I'm thinking back to the hardware store for a different product. Half a foot too short. So anyway, that's going to kind of do it for this video. Um, my next video, or at least what I'm planning on doing now, is I'm going to 
install the solar and the max fan on the roof, as well as the awning, and finish all the painting of the trim and fix the trim on the outside. I'm trying to get all the major stuff done, like all the big exterior things. Um, then I can just focus on the inside. And I know you're like, come on, dude, get to the good part. But we're getting there. Um, I'm just trying to get all the major stuff out of the way. And then we're going to build the inside of this thing. There's a guy unloading a dumpster right there. So yeah, um, if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications if you are interested in this box fan build. Thank you.